courts are able to determine election petitions and related disputes within six months. <laughs> Members, it is also unacceptable for the Houses of Parliament to deny the nation a much needed instrument in the war against corruption by continuing to sabotage the passage of the Conflict of Interest Bill. <laughs> I implore you, I implore you, honorable members, to stop dragging your feet on this bill, unless, my friends, there is a conflict of interest in the passing of the conflict of interest legislation. Similarly, the National Treasury has been dragging its feet in the implementation of an e-procurement system for the last 10 years. Today, I have directed the National Treasury to roll out the e-procurement system by the end of the first quarter of 2025 and ensure that going forward, only procurement undertaken through this system is sanctioned and paid for. Of the many difficult assignments, of the many difficult assignments I have undertaken, this fight against corruption is one I now take on with resolve going forward. Let this serve as notice to all. Independent institutions charged with this responsibility must up their game, pull up their socks, and match up to the expectations of the people of Kenya. Honorable members, I have stated in the past and now reiterate today that in the face of undisputed evidence or credible information on corruption, I will not hesitate to take decisive action. Accordingly, I now direct in furtherance of the principles enshrined in Article 10 of the Constitution on transparency and accountability and based on new information provided by investigative agencies and partner nations that the procuring agencies within the Ministry of Transport and the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum immediately cancel the ongoing procurement process for the JKIA expansion public private partnership transaction. Let me, let me repeat this for clarity. I have said that provided, because of the information that has been provided to us by partner nations, an agent I have directed agencies within the Ministry of Transport and the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum to immediately cancel the ongoing procurement process for JKI expansion public-private partnership transaction as well as the recently concluded Ketrago transmission in public <laughs> immediately commence the process of onboarding alternative partners because these are important projects. <laughs> Honorable members, the work of taking our nation forward is our collective responsibility as citizens. For this reason, we value the contribution of all, whether they come in the form of support or encouragement suggestion or proposal, criticism or protest, 
I believe that the most powerful component of leadership is listening and learning. Therefore, I engage with you and listen to all citizens, their elected leaders, public officers, administrators, teachers, and other professionals, learners and the youth, farmers, fisherfolk, pastoralists, traders, craftsmen, artisans, nurses, doctors, community health promoters, and workers across all types of sectors in every sector. I listen too to religious leaders, the civil society, industrialists, entrepreneurs, and professionals. Their contributions and everyone else's have my full attention and commitment to respond through positive, affirmative action that takes the national transformation endeavor forward. I commit to continue listening and acting, to engage, debate, deliberate with you, and to take your, your input into consideration in serving our nation. By design, the bottom-up economic transformation agenda is defined by its capacity to elicit feedback in the course of implementation and incorporate the same in making improvements and further progress. With every input from stakeholders, our ability to drive progress increases. By listening to you and to every Kenyan, I am able to serve this nation better. As we take part in this necessary discourse, I want to make one thing very clear. I'm fully invested in the success of the strategies, policies, programs, and projects under our plan. For this reason, I am committed to do all it takes and work with every willing Kenyan until we succeed, because failure is not an option. Given the challenges our nation has faced, it has become clear, honorable members, that overcoming these obstacles requires the collective energy, the collective wisdom, ideas, and goodwill of Kenyans of all political, cultural persuasions, religious beliefs, and walks of life. The wisdom of entrenching national unity and inclusivity as a national value in our constitution is clearly evident. Our diversity is our source of power. And this moment in the history of our nation calls for radical collaboration to transcend our challenges. We do not have the luxury of magnifying our differences. It is time for all of us to pull together and usher the nation into the future of our dreams. With this in mind, I initiated extensive consultations with leaders from across all divides, public and private. Through these engagements, we resolved to reimagine unity and inclusivity and harness the full potential of our, of our nation through bipartisanship, which culminated in the formation of the broad-based cabinet. The imperative to accommodate the contribution of leaders across the aisle inspired us to constitute the broad-based government, a partnership based on shared purpose and premise on a commitment to bring our national values into action to turbocharge the implementation of the transformation of our nation. Being a farmer myself, transformation is like farming. A lot of resources are invested in plowing the land and planting the seeds, after which there is nothing to see for all the work except stretches of bare earth. Impatience might lead to anxiety and lamentation of the waste of effort in seed buried in the earth. However, after a brief wait, seedlings sprout, requiring close attention, weeding, and patient tending into the crop that will be ready for harvest. So is economic transformation. It requires hard work, investment of resources, patience, and faith. We have planted the seed, and all over the field, it is beginning to sprout. While admittedly, there remains much to fulfill, our collective hope to deliver the national economic transformation that this nation so dearly deserves is on course. 
I am proud to declare that we have also made undeniable progress in building on the strong foundation laid in previous years and getting the national development